Hi everyone. Welcome to Pemidaka, a platform to learn everything about piping design. Visit pemidaka.com to see my latest post. This video is about pipes. Being a piping design engineer, one must essentially have to understand the background of the technical background of pipes because pipes are the foremost thing that a piping engineer should know about. So it is essential for a piping design engineer to know about pipes and its technical background and I am Subhash, let's get into the video. Pipes are a component with a cylindrical body and with a circular hollow cross section and this hollow cross section is used for the transportation of the fluid which are passing through the pipes. So this is how one should define a pipe. Let's see the picture of pipe. Many of us have seen pipes in reality so there is no doubt about it. No one has to teach us what is pipes. But we must know every item and everything that are used in design and engineering has some technical backgrounds. So based on the technical evaluations things may vary. So that we have to understand. In this video we will try to understand what is the technicalities of pipes. So the first thing we should know about the cross section of the pipes. As we said the pipes are cylindrical body with a hollow cross section. So any object which has a cylindrical body and a hollow cross section has three important elements. One is OD which is an outside diameter and ID inside diameter and thickness. However pipes are generally referred with respect to one element which is the outside diameter of the pipe. Yes, pipes are generally referred with the outside diameter of the pipe which is commonly known in the industry in terms of NPS. So NPS is the common term that are used in industry to refer a particular size of a pipe. When someone says 1 inch that means it's a 1 inch pipe in the sense it's 1 inch NPS pipe. NPS stands for nominal pipe size. So the nominal pipe size that starts from half an inch up to 18 inch as per the manufacturing standard of piping. It's available in 1 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch and up to 18 inch. But what is the difference between then NPS and OD? Is there any difference or is there no difference? Yes, there is a difference between NPS and OD. For sizes less than 14 inch, it doesn't include the 14 inch. These are sizes less than 14 inch that, that actually starts from 12 inch. For sizes less than 14 inch, OD and NPS are not same. For example, let's understand the OD of the 2 inch pipe. If you convert the 2 inch pipe in terms of metric unit, that becomes 50.8 mm. But if you check the actual OD of 2 inch pipe available in the market, it is 60.33. So that's why I have said the OD and NPS are not same for sizes less than 14 inch. So what is the case of sizes above 14 inch? OD and NPS are same for sizes which are above, 18, uh, above 14 inch that starts from 14 inch. So let's look at the example. 14 inch NPS, if you convert this into metric unit, that becomes 355.6 mm and uh, the actual OD of the 14 inch pipe available in the market is also 355.6 mm. So this is the unique difference between NPS and OD. But technically NPS is the term that are referred for to identify the piping size like uh, pipe size we can say you can call a piping size or pipe size it doesn't matter uh, this is what NPS is the term that are generally referred for uh, the to identify the pipe size now let's understand further about pipes the piping OD which is the outside diameter of the pipes are basically calculated by process engineers based on certain factors one of the factors is volume of the flow and the other is velocity and there are n number of factors and n number of parameters that decides the piping OD, the outside diameter of the pipe. However, pipe thickness has to be calculated by piping design engineers based on the thickness calculation available in ASME B31.3. 
ASME B31.3 clearly shows the pipe thickness formula through which the piping thickness can be calculated. Is this the final thickness? No. So what is the final thickness? The thickness we have right now calculated based on the reference from ASME B31.3 is the thickness to withstand the design pressure. But there are other factors too to be considered in piping thickness when it comes to final piping thickness. So what is it about? Final thickness is a thickness where corrosion allowance also to be added to the minimum thickness which is the C. C is the corrosion allowance that are added to the minimum thickness that becomes the final thickness. So final thickness of the pipe which includes the corrosion allowance of the pipe. Now we should understand what is corrosion allowance. Corrosion allowance is a mechanical allowance added to the minimum pipe thickness to prevent the failures of pipes in case of corrosion or erosion which could be internally or externally. Generally the fluids that are carried through piping are corrosive in nature and it reacts with piping, corrodes the internal surface of the pipe and reduces the pipe thickness. In such cases, piping thickness may get reduced and it could lead to an accident. So to prevent such failures, to safeguard the piping, to prevent the failure of pipes in case of corrosion and erosion, corrosion allowances added to the minimum piping thickness. C is the alphabet that denotes the corrosion allowance which is actually calculated based on the corrosive and erosive nature of the fluid by piping material experts. Now what is more about pipes? Pipes are categorized based on N connections which is a plain end and bevel end and threaded end. Each of those types are used in different purpose and in different requirements. Pipes are also categorized based on the manufacturing methods. There are two different types, seamless and welded. Seamless pipes are pipes without a welding joint which means it could be made either through the extrusion process or through the forming method. So these are the two different methods by which seamless pipes are produced. And the next one is the welded pipes. Welded pipes are basically pipes that are produced from sheets. Sheets are rolled and then welded together in such a way to get the shape of the pipe. And these are known as welded pipes. These are the little information one should know about the pipes. Basically, a piping design engineer must know the definition of the pipe and the difference between OD and NPS and he should know the importance of corrosion allowance and the types of end connections available in the piping and types of pipe based on manufacturing system. These little informations adds value to our profession. Thanks for watching my video. Hope you like this material. If you like this video, give me a like and share it with your friends and at the same time post your comments if you have any. I'll be able to reply you. So I'll meet you in another video. Until then bye from Subhash.